Okay, we are going to pass out the Sunday School lesson for today. And we're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 1 again. Verses 5 through 9. And we are going to talk about the last word in this series of these things mentioned in this passage. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9. And the word is charity. All right, let's all stand. I'll read it, and then we'll pray. Verses 5 through 9. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Father, help us today to listen to your word as we study it, and uh, please work in our lives. And Lord, we need to add this thing. Uh, this is a vital part of our life, so we need to be open to it and be willing to do it. So help us to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Be seated. So we're going to finish up the list of the words today. The next Sunday, we're going to finish up the passage. We'll be studying verses 8 through 15 next Sunday. Finish up the passage because it says several references to these things. If you see that in verse number nine, you see or verse number eight, and you see that in verse number nine, and you see that in verse number ten, and you see that in verse number twelve, and you see that in verse number fifteen, you see the phrase these things. And that these things are the uh, those eight things that we're talking about and the, the eight words. And so today is the last in that series, but then also we're going to talk about what that uh, next week about uh, how to apply this to our life and what the importance of it. So anyway, it's important that uh, we get that lesson next week. Now, uh, we're going to talk about charity, and uh, <clears throat> we, are good, we are to add charity to brotherly kindness, all right? This is all part of the Christian growth process, and we know that uh, 2 Peter 3.18 says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we are definitely to grow in grace uh, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That grow in grace, in 2 Peter 3.18, that grow, grow in grace means to grow in God's influence. In other words, God should be influencing your life more and more and more. If he's influencing your life more and more, you're thinking more like him, you're living more like him, that's growth. And then uh, grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're supposed to be learning of about him because he is your example. He is the, uh, th that's how you are to live the Christian life, like he lived the Christian life when he was here on earth apart from his miracles, all right? So, because you can't do his miracles. So anyway, don't try, because you can't. But anyway, um, uh, that's what we're supposed to be doing. So charity, uh, the word charity there in verse uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 7 uh, means, uh, <clears throat> it means love or benevolence in action. Love or benevolence in action. It is not just saying, I love you, but showing it in our actions toward others. So it's an action word, all right? <clears throat> It's an action word. And so this is what we're supposed to do. We're not just supposed to. Uh, love is, is love. There is feeling in, in the process of love, uh, but it, that's not the main thing. Um, the main thing is uh, love is an action word. You show it. You don't just feel it. You show it. All right? And uh, so when we got saved, the charity or love of God came inside of us. All right? Because let's go to Galatians chapter 5 and just show you that you have this already in you. Right, Galatians chapter 5, which is talking about the fruit of the Spirit. We all know the fruit of the Spirit came in uh, to you when you got saved. The fruit of the Spirit came in to live inside of you. This is what the Holy Spirit's all about. He's, he's the fruit of the Spirit. That's Him. All right? What's the Holy Spirit like? He loves love, his joy, his peace, his long suffering, his gentleness, his goodness, his faith, his meekness, his temperance. <clears throat> so, uh, it's the first one list in there, first in that list of the fruit of the Spirit in verse 22 of Galatians 5 is love. It's charity, love, same thing. And so this is, you have this in you. All right? You have the ability to be able to show this love. Okay? You have the ability to be able to do this. The love is there, and you can show this love. All right? So it's not just saying I love you, but it's showing it in our actions toward others. All right? Now, um, the Holy Spirit, who is love, is living in you. That means love is in you. Now, we can love or be charitable like the Bible says we are to be. All right, we can't do that. Like the Bible says we are to be. Not, we're not talking about the world's idea of love. You need to completely cross that out of your mind. 
because the world does not know the first thing about love. Real Bible love, right? If I had to take the world's love and God's love, which is taught in the Bible, uh, which one is right? Well, God's love, of course, is right. And so I, and the world, is, is, world doesn't know the first thing about it, all right? So um, we can be charitable. We can love like the Bible says we are to be. As you add these other things to your faith, virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly kindness, then charity will naturally start showing in your actions toward others, all right? So this is all, it all comes together. It all works together. You add these things to your faith. The last one is charity. That will naturally start showing as you add these other things to your life. Now, let's see what God says about our charity or about our love. Out of faith, okay, go to 1 Corinthians 13, 13. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. This chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians is the, it's called the love chapter, and we're going to go through that a little bit today, not all of it, but a little bit of it, and you're going to see uh, what Bible love is, what God's love really is all about. But in verse 13, the last verse of the chapter, it says, now by the faith hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity, right? <clears throat> Faith is really important. Now, hope is really important, but charity is the greatest of these three, all right? <clears throat> now, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says that. Go to Matthew chapter 22. You got to see the importance of this. Matthew chapter 22. Then verse 35, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, asked Jesus a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Now, the answer that Jesus gave him was probably totally unexpected. They were probably, they were probably thinking he was going to talk, tell him about one of the commandments, uh, the greatest commandment. Uh, but this is what he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two commandments hang all the law, all the commandments, and the prophets, everything the prophet preached, the prophets preached, everything they taught, all was based on thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this, this is the greatest commandment. This is the greatest of the three, uh, faith, hope, and charity. It is the most important thing uh, that we could do for God. The greatest commandment that you can do is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. By the way, when you do that, uh, and we, we taught several weeks ago, we taught through all that how to love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. We taught how to do that uh, in the Sunday school in the weeks past, and in the last few months we did that. But uh, when you do that, then everything else is going to fall in place. <clears throat> okay, your relationship with God is going to be good, solid, and stable. Your your relationship toward people will be what it's what it ought to be when you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. <clears throat> so it's really important that you do this. All right. Above everything, we are to show fervent charity. All right. Go to First Peter chapter four, verse eight. So not only are we to have charity, but it is to be fervent. And we'll, we'll see what that means in just a second. But First Peter chapter four and verse eight. It says, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. So above all things, wow, that's pretty important when God says that, above all things, have not just charity, but fervent charity. That means continual, strong charity. That's what you're supposed to have, all right? Continual, strong charity. So, you say, well, I don't really know how to do this. Um, well, first of all, if you really want to know how to love like you should, get the Sunday school lessons when we taught about how to love the Lord thy God with all the heart, soul, and mind, and strength, and love, how to love your neighbor as yourself. But it needs to be fervent, needs to be continual and strong. All right? Now, <clears throat> one thing, there's a couple things about love that I, I want to mention. Um, I may get this to later in the lesson. I don't remember if I put it in there or not, but... Uh, the Bible does say this, charity never faileth. Never. All right? <clears throat> when somebody says, I just don't love them anymore, just don't love him anymore. You didn't have Bible love when you said that. You never had Bible love because charity never faileth. Well, I don't believe that. I believe something different. Well, then I'll, I'm just going to believe God. 
because God said it never fails. And if you say it fails and God says it doesn't, I'm just going to believe God over you. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm going to believe God. Okay? It never fails. You didn't have Bible love. If you had Bible love, it wouldn't stop. Okay? Charity never failed. They were never, if you look it up, it doesn't mean most of the time. It means never. All right? It means never. So uh, charity never fails. So it's really important that it can be continual and strong. All right, now, we are going to face times in our life where it's, okay, if you, if you know people for a long time and you, you really get to know them, there are going to be times when it's easier to love them than other times. So in order to keep that love continual and strong, you need to stay, keep your relationship with God strong. So that so his love is is constantly flowing through you to other other people, all right? <clears throat> it's because it's supposed to be continual. Above all things, have fervent, continual, strong charity among yourselves. That's what it says. All right. Now, by the way, God never gives us a command that we cannot obey. He never gives us a command we cannot obey. He never gives us a command where he doesn't give us the help to obey it. So we can do this. All right. We can do this. So anyway. Uh, it is the most important action to put into your Christian life. It is a sign of the out, or outward proof of perfectness or growth or completeness. Go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. Colossians 3, verse 14 says, here's that phrase again, connected with the word charity, and above all these things, all right, <clears throat> above, and above all these things, just like we just read, in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 8, and above all things, well, here it is, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, or the word perfectness means growth, completeness, all right? So it is the most important action to put into your Christian life is for you to show love. Christians should show love, all right? <clears throat> now, um, first go, go to 1 Corinthians 13. One, we're going to kind of go through this. Uh, some of the things in this love, we call the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, and verse 1, interesting statement that is made. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. My speech, that means my words, is nothing. Okay? <clears throat> Uh, verse 2, and though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mystery and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so I can remove mountains, and I have that charity, I am nothing. So my deeds, my words, are nothing unless it is with love. That word nothing there means worthless or meaningless. My spiritual life is nothing without love. All right? My speech is nothing without love. My spiritual life is nothing without love. All right? Love is so important. The love of God, not the love of the world, but the love of God. And you, if you are saved, you have the love of God. You have the love of God. It's there. It's in here. All right? <clears throat> so you can do this. Uh, verse Corinthians 13, 3. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. My good deeds profit nothing without love. They don't mean a thing if it's not done with love. Okay, <clears throat> see the importance of this? This is really, really important. It's really, really important. Um, so anyway, that's, that's supposed to be a, a key part of our life. And if you don't have this, if this isn't showing in your life to the people that have, God has put into your life, whether it be family, whether it be people you work with, whether it be people that you are, uh, people at church, if you, this, isn't, is, this isn't showing in your life, then there's something wrong with your, with your Christian walk. Because God said, if it's not what it should be, your, the words you say, your spiritual life, your, your good deeds are nothing without love. It doesn't matter how much you, quote unquote, serve the Lord. It doesn't matter how much you witness for the Lord if you are, don't have any love. All right? <clears throat> That's one of the reasons why I do not believe in when you witness to somebody, you rush through it. I don't believe in that at all. You've got to really get to know the person you're witnessing to as much as you can, as much as it's practical to do that. Uh, you have to really get to know the person, uh, find out about different things about them, and, and then uh, let them know that you care. And the more you get to know a person, 
<laughs> the more that the love of God can flow through you, they can see you're not here just to to talk to get me into church. You're not here to change me from being what I am to a Baptist. No, you you really care about me. You really care about my soul, just like God does. Really cares about that. See, and it's really important to show that. It's really important to show that when you're when you're talking to people. Um, <clears throat> It's one of the reasons why, like, if you work with unsaved people, you don't preach to them about their sins. They don't know any better. you got to talk to them about Jesus. you got to show them the love of God. Show them the Christian life with, with the way you live, but also tell them about the Christian life and about your Savior. See? <clears throat> I mean, when they brought the adulterous woman to Jesus, he didn't, he didn't preach to them and say, yeah, they're right, you're wicked, you're evil, you're sinful. No. He was trying to reach her. Man, you see, you see nothing but love toward her from him. He didn't approve of her sins, but he loved her. And you see nothing but contempt that he has for the people that were trying to stone her to death. See? And, and so we need to make sure that we are, we are very loving people. Not compromise. You know, sometimes people say, that's soft. So God's soft? I don't think God's soft. You ever read the Old Testament? Talk, see how he dealt with his people? He's not soft. Do you ever read about read the book of Revelation? God's not soft, but he he hates sin. But he sure loves the sinner. He really loves the sinner. Uh, and you know there there are there are preachers uh, that are on the internet that are spewing hate. They're they're just preaching hate towards certain groups of people. That is not God. Uh, I read in John three sixteen, God so loved the world. And the world means everybody in it, means the people. He didn't say God so loved the world except this group. He didn't say that. He said God so loved the world. And so anybody, any kind, anytime you hear a preacher preaching about, about hate, how you ought to hate certain groups of people, yeah, hate their sin, absolutely hate their sin, just like you ought to hate your sin. But don't hate the people. You know, God, you know something about this. God hates my sin with a passion. He hates my sin. But I'm so thankful he didn't hate me. I'm saved today. You know why I'm saved? Because God so loved the world. God so loved me. I'm going to heaven because of that. See, and so our whole life ought to be about loving people. Yes, hating their sin, uh, but loving the people. And uh, that's what we're supposed to do. Okay, God says we are to pursue love and ways to show uh, show it and grow it in our lives. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, For follow after charity. Follow after charity. That means you are to learn as much as you can about charity, and so you can show it as much as you possibly can in your life. That's what it's supposed to be. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20 <clears throat> If, if, but if in the great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and, and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. <clears throat> if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be vessel of honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared to every good work. For flee also youthful lust, but follow after righteousness, faith, charity, follow after charity, peace within the call of the Lord out of a pure heart. So we ought to follow after charity. It means we ought to search, seek it down, follow it, uh, find out how to love, find out who to love which is everybody, how, how to love the way Jesus loves. And then we are to find out practical ways of showing that love to people. That's what we're supposed to do. Okay? <clears throat> That's exactly what we're supposed to do. Now, uh, and it should be getting stronger in our lives. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 4. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 4. <clears throat> Let me see here if I got that one verse right. I don't think I did. I didn't get it right. No, I didn't write that down right. So anyway, let me just tell you what, it's, what the verse says that I meant. Uh, it says, God says, all things are to be done with charity. Okay, all things are to be done with charity. It's, I mean, it's just supposed to come out in our life. All right? I hope you never show, give the attitude to somebody that you hate them. That'd be terrible. That's not Christian at all. That's not Jesus. Jesus, Jesus gave... Uh, gave, made it clear that he hated some of the things that people did, but he never he never said he hated people. All right, and we got to make sure that what we do is done with love. First um, Timothy one three: As we obey God and keep our hearts pure, we will be able to show love like we should. 
right? Again, as I said before, if you're not showing love in your life, there's something wrong in your heart. You're not pure. You don't have a pure heart. You have a dirty heart. And you need to get, <clears throat> get that pure. You need to get before God, confess your sins, <clears throat> uh, ask God to cleanse you of your sins so your heart is pure, and then you can show the love that you're supposed to show to other people. And that's something that a Christian should be, should be doing. Titus chapter 2 and verse 2. Titus 2 verse 2. <clears throat> that the age of men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity. So I'm to be sound as we get older, we are to get sound or stable in or in solid in charity. All right? <clears throat> we need to do that. Now, I will tell you this. As you read the Bible, get to know the Bible more uh, and get to know God more, uh, you get to see how, how exact, it's, it almost seems like the way the world is, is the exact opposite of the way God is. And you begin to hate the things that the world is doing. Uh, the things that they do, their anti-God philosophy, just their care, can care less about God, uh, just the way they are. I mean, it's amazing. You know, I, I, it bothers me sometimes. I mean, I know people aren't saved. I understand that. There's a lot of people aren't saved. But I, I just, sometimes I'll, I'll drive, like I'll be driving from here to pick up my wife from church on Sunday morning, and I'll, and I'll see people just going about their business on a Sunday morning. I'm thinking, it, it's really sad. There's absolutely no thought of God here. It's, it's Sunday, and there's no thought of God. At all, no, no intention on even going to, to even a church and thinking about God at all. They just live their whole life. They're enjoying this beautiful weather and everything that God's given them, their health to do what they're doing. No, absolutely no acknowledgement of God whatsoever. It's really sad. I, I, it, 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 sometimes it bothers me. And I just it, it feel, I feel sorry for God that he has done all this, that he's done for people, and just so much is done without even him in mind. Who cares? You know, and people who have the gall to go so far as to say there is no such thing as God. It's absolutely amazing. So, so myself, I have to say, as you get older and you realize that, you see that, uh, loving people, be, you, know, you got to really keep up on loving people. Otherwise, you can, you can really start turning against people with that. But you got to love them anyway. you got to care for them like God cares for them. And, you know, God sees everything they do. God sees everything, reads their minds. He knows what's in their heart. And yet he still loves them. And we need to be like that, too. Uh, it's really important. Now, let's go to, back to 1 Corinthians 13 and look at some characteristics of Bible love, Bible charity. 1 Corinthians 13 <clears throat> says here that, verse 1, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. Going to verse 4, and then it says here, Charity suffereth long. Charity suffereth long, and is kind, charity envieth not, charity wants not itself, is not puffed up. So, charity is, uh, it suffers long. Charity is kind. Charity doesn't envy. Doesn't build up itself. That means, wants up itself means build up itself. Isn't proud. Okay? That's true charity. That's what real love is all about. Right? I mean, when you love somebody... You don't approach them at all with any of this kind of attitude. Being uh, you are you are you suffer along with them. You don't you don't uh, don't have a short fuse with them. I guess you could say you're kind to them. You don't envy them and anything that they do, anything they accomplish, any kind of uh, maybe they get praise and you, about something and you don't get praise about something they do. You don't envy that and nothing. You don't envy anything about uh, toward that person. Uh, you don't build yourself up. Don't make yourself look good uh, in front of people. Uh, you're not proud at all. Uh, that's that's the way you conduct yourself when you're around people, all right? Verse 5, does not be hate itself unseemly. That means you don't act indecent or shamefully. All right? You don't act indecent or shamefully. It doesn't, uh, charity doesn't seek its own gain, isn't selfish, doesn't get mad easily, <clears throat> seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. All right? It only thinks good thoughts. That's the way somebody who lo loves is. So you, you, you don't, <laughs> you are very, a very, uh, um, Decent person, you don't do anything to embarrass. You know, like like it, when you're around your family, you don't do anything to embarrass them. You don't do that, okay? You don't act shamefully at all. You don't seek your own gain. 
Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 21 makes a real sad statement uh, about, about some people there. In fact, the way Paul put it like this, he said, For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. So, but, but people who love don't do that. They don't seek their own gain. They always want to be a blessing and a help to somebody else. Charity doesn't get mad easily. All right? <clears throat> it thinks good thoughts. Philippians 4, 8. All right? It thinks good thoughts. Verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. It doesn't rejoice in sin, but rejoices in the truth. <clears throat> All right? You see that? doesn't rejoice in sin, but rejoices in the truth. All right? <clears throat> I mean, you hate sin so much that you don't want anything to do with it in your life and life of anybody else's. Uh, and you love truth so much that you rejoice when, when it's in your life, when it's in the life of other people. All right? And verse 7 says, It bears or covers all things. Beareth all things. It cover, that means it covers all things with silence. All right? <clears throat> You know, when you find out something bad about somebody, uh, you don't broadcast it. You cover it. Now, that doesn't mean you overlook it. All right? Okay, for, for instance, if you come to my office tonight and you sit there and you confess this sin to me. You don't, you, know, you don't have to confess sin to me. But let's say you do. Let's say you just you feel like you got to tell somebody and you just want to just want to maybe we can pray together and all that kind of stuff. And you tell me something that you did that's, oh, it's just... Terrible, not like any sin is not terrible, but you did something that, oh, it's awful. And, and, and then you walk out of that, and as soon as you leave, I go up to somebody and say, you would believe what they just told me. Why would I do that? Okay. No, I don't need to be broadcasting it to everybody. My, the whole goal is not to destroy you. The whole goal is to help you, to get you back up on your feet. All right? That's what love does. Love doesn't like to go spread trash about people. Love wants to help them, right? <laughs> love wants to help them. And so um, it, it, it covers things. And I'm not talking about sweeping under the rug and act like it's not there at all. No, you deal with it, but you don't have to. T everybody doesn't have to know everybody else's business. It's just not something that has to be done, all right? Verse 7 also says, believes all things, that they are true, right? And <clears throat> so um, I think it's like this. When you come to me and tell me something, I'm supposed to believe you. And, I, and that's the way I am. I, I might be gullible, uh, but if you tell me, like, for instance, I've had people say, oh, this person did this. And this person said this. And I call them up in my office, I'll talk to them, and I'll say, what about this? Oh, I didn't do it. I believe them. I believe them. Why? I love that person. And I believe them. Why would I, I would think I would think like this? Why would anybody look me in the face and lie to me? You know, so I believe them. I believe things. But you know, events. By the way, not another thing too. God, the truth is always going to come out. Right. Truth right. is always going to come out. And you could tell me something and it's not true, but you know what? God will reveal it. That's right. Especially if it's going to hurt His church, God will reveal it. All right, for sure. So it's just up to me to believe things. Hopes all things, that means they're optimistic, uh, endures all things, doesn't give up, okay, doesn't give up, and <laughs> endure it. Um, I look at it this way. Now, I mean, I'm, I'm realistic when I deal with people. I, I've been around this, this thing for a long time. I've dealt with people for a long time. I'm realistic. But I never lose hope. In other words, I don't, I don't look at somebody and say, yeah, they're hopeless. They're absolutely hopeless. No, there's no, as long as there's God, there's hope. As long as there's breath, there's hope. People can turn around like that. They can't, right? And so, and I'm all for that. And my my whole thing thinking there is, you know, if for instance, if they if they come and say, hey, you know what, I want to get this thing right. Hey, let's do it. Let's get it right. Let's get it fixed. You want to do that? Thank the Lord. That's wonderful. Fantastic. I never look at them and say you're hopeless. Forget it. No, because there's hope, all right. And that's what that that's the way you're supposed to look at people. Now, sometimes it's hard to do that, but you can't give up. All right? You can't give up. As long as there's breath, there is hope. You never know what's going on in somebody's heart or mind. You never know what they're thinking. Right. It could be one step from getting right, from turning everything around. You never know. All right? Verse 8 says, Charity never faileth. Never faileth. It never fa fails or drops away. That's what that means. It never fails or drops away. 
So, the, by the way, these are things that God's talking about here. The natural man can't do that. Now, I'm not totally successful doing it this way. I feel being loving like I should. I know that. But my failures are, are, are because <clears throat> I still am a sinner and I have flesh. But, so these things are, they cannot, they have to be. You have to let God have complete control of your life or you're not going to be able to love this way. You're just not. God's love, if you compare God's love to the way we feel like loving and the way the world teaches we're supposed to love, God's love is so superior. That's right. So far greater than that. I mean, man, songs have been written about it. How amazing God's love is. And so, if you ever want to think about how God's love is, think about yourself and how God still loves you despite. I mean, again, I think about. If, you, if a person has been saved 20 years and they've committed one sin a day for 20 years, a 20, a one, year, one sin a day for a year is 365. Multiply that times 20. That's 7,200, I think. 7,200 something sins. And God still loves you? Wow. And you hate sin. Remember how much you hate sin. But if you've committed just one sin a day for the last 20 years, that's over 7,000 of them. But he still loves you. How many people could do something wrong to you 7,000 times and you still love them? His, his love is awesome. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. That he still he keeps on loving. And here's the thing, folks. God's love, that love, lives inside me. And if you're saved, that love lives, lives inside you. And you can love like that. You really can you can't love like 1 Corinthians 13 is teaching us to love. We just have to yield to the control of the Holy Spirit, let Him run our life, and we've got to, we've got to do our part uh, to take what He teaches us and put it into practice. And, and then, you know, when we mess up, we've got to make sure that we get that right. But we've got to understand that this is the love of God. And by the way, Pete, the world doesn't understand this kind of love. They don't get it. It's way far above what they can even imagine. Now let's look at the results of this kind of love. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. And we add all this to brotherly kindness. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. <clears throat> so while knowledge can puff somebody up, charity shown to others will edify them. All right? <clears throat> That's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not supposed to impress you with the knowledge that I have. All right? That's not, that's not what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to edify you, not impress you. And that true love will do that. All right? I'm supposed to work hard at making you stronger, making you uh, better, <clears throat> drawing you closer to God. I'm not supposed to spend time when I talk to you. I'm not supposed to be talking to you about me. Hey, look at me. No, that, uh, the knowledge you get, and by the way, the knowledge you get, uh, if that's all you do is just learn, it puffs up. That means it makes proud. It makes proud, right? <laughs> so you got to be careful uh, that you don't show that, that kind of an attitude. You're supposed to work at edifying people. It is one of the things that shows outwardly in a church, and that church, church, uh, that church becomes known for its love. Go to 1 Thessalonians 3, 6, the local church in Thessalonica. It says here, 1 Thessalonians 3, 6, But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. So Timothy, when he came to Paul, he told the, the Paul and the group about the charity, the faith and the charity that this church had showed them. They had a reputation of being lo a loving group of people. 2 Thessalonians 1, 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith grows exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. See that? It aboundeth, it grows. So they were known for their love. And that's what will happen. If everybody in the church would obey the scripture about loving people by adding this to your faith, uh, then we would be, always be known as a loving church. All right? And uh, that's something that we should have as a reputation. First uh, Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says this. So when, not, when uh, charity will edify other people, if you love people, you'll be edifying and building them up. 
uh, it'll give a good reputation to you, to your family, to your church, uh, amongst the people that, that know you. And then 1 Timothy 2, 15, notwithstanding, if she shall be saved in childbearing, that's a woman, if they continue in faith and charity with holiness, uh, with sobriety. So she shall be saved in childbearing if the children that she bears continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So when the child gets saved and becomes a Christian of faith and love, the mother knows all she went through was worth it. All right? <clears throat> was worth it. So, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I want to be the kind of child uh, that that made my, my parents, I would never want to be a child that made my parents sorry they ever had me. I wouldn't want to do that. I want to make sure, especially, you think about all women go through when they have children? Wow, I can't imagine you ladies. Oh, you're amazing. Absolutely amazing. And so there's a lot of uh, agony and pain when you give birth to that child. Okay, when you first give birth to the child, it's, and I know this as a dad, when you see that little baby, how cute that little baby is. Oh, so cute. And they say so many cute things. As you're getting older, they do so many cute things. Uh, and, and, but you know what? As they get older and older and older, that cuteness goes away. Especially if they start doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. Now, it's not so cute. When they start rebelling, when they start saying things to the parents, when they start mouthing off to the parents, it's not so cute. And they start bringing pain and heartache to the parents because of the way they're living. That's not so cute at all. It isn't. You see, <clears throat> so you want to instill um, this, you want to be a loving parent, and you also want to instill this, this God's love in their hearts themselves. And, and just, you know, okay, the love of God is not, uh, God, in fact, God says you make sure your love isn't phony. The love of God is not phony. The love of God is genuine. The love of God is real. When you truly love with the love of God, uh, people see that they, you have something that's real and genuine. That's right. They do. And that's what we ought to show the children. All right? We ought to show the children. You know, we are up against it. When you think about the, our, the children that go to our church, you think about the bus kids, you think about the, ch the church kids, Satan has just got his guns set on them. He wants them so bad. He, you understand that? Think about your child. Satan wants your child so bad. And he's got a f whole bag of tricks to accomplish that. And he is going to give his 100% effort, effort to that. The demons that work with him are all with him. They all work with him. They have, they have a lot of unity. I mean, those the demons and, and the devil have a lot of unity. They're more unity than the Christians have sometimes. And, and so they all, they all got this one goal, this one purpose. They're all focused on it, and they want our kids. So we got to do our part to make sure that the kids, that what we're preaching and teaching to them is real. Now, I know, I don't care. I don't, you know what? If everybody in this church lived like a hypocrite, <clears throat> I know what I'm preaching and teaching is real. I know it is. If you don't take it and apply it to your life and you live opposite of that, and you show, you show the kids in this church that, that, uh, that Christianity is just a bunch of baloney, I know what I'm preaching and teaching is real. I know that. God's real. God's word is real. Christian life is real. Christian life is the best life in the world. Amen. God is good no matter what you tell me. God, right. God is great. God is awesome. God is love. I know that. No Amen. doubt about that. All right? Now, <clears throat> but we ought to show that to our kids. Right. Not just say it, but show it to our kids. So that as they get older, you know, they're going to see, they're going to have all this, all this good influence around them that they have to deal with. When they, have, when they decide something, I want them to decide with a lot of ammunition on the good side. I really do. Now, 1 Peter 4, 8, very interesting verse here. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. We already read part of it, but I want to read the second part. For above, and above all things, have firm charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. The word multitude means large number of sins. All right? This, I, I mentioned this before, but it says it right here. We, got, we are, it's so easy to spread junk. It really is. Uh, it's unbelievable how fast it goes, how quick it goes. Um, it, 
it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. I mean, it's somebody does something really good, and not many people find out about it. Somebody does something really bad, everybody finds out about it. Now, that's that's just. I mean, again, I understand if I if I if I do something wicked and terrible, and it's made public, uh, and people find out about it, I, that's shame on me. Shame on me. But I'll tell you what. I would hope that people would say would not their whole goal would not be to destroy Mike Richter. I hope their goal would be to try to reclaim him, try to get him back. That's what I would hope. How can what can we do? Well, he's not listening to anything. Well, we can at least pray for him instead of sitting around talking about all this stuff. You know, <clears throat> I mean, really, that that's the goal. We ought, to, we ought to want the Christian restored. We ought not to want to drive them away. We ought to want to draw them closer. Draw them back. I want people who walk away from this church backslidden. I want people to think that this is an open door for them. Come on. They can walk in here anytime and people are going to love them. That's right. Amen. Amen. And not treat them like they have the plague. Yep. That's good. Now, we can't fellowship... You walk away from God living a lonely life. I can't fellowship with you. I cannot go out to eat with you and have fellowship with you and have a close relationship with you anymore. You have you have stopped that. It's your, it's your choice, not mine. But when I see you, I can show you that I care. Amen. When I see you, I can show you the love of Jesus. Right. I can. You walk in the doors. I have seen that happen before. Okay, for, I remember one time... Um, I was, when I was pastoring in Missouri, this family got got all out of sorts, and they got they got mad, and they and they they were going to leave. They left. Well, then he calls me up and he says, "We want to come back." I said, "Okay, great." They came back, and every as far I was watching, I was watching how our people were going to react to this. They, this was a really, uh, at one time, this family was a really good sound. I mean, he was a bus driver. Uh, they were soul winners. They worked in, in a Sunday school, all this kind of really good sound people. But anyway, um, they came back, and I was watching people. And everybody, I saw everybody. I saw everybody. That, is that, when I saw when I saw this, I saw everybody walk up to them and hug them and, and tell them they're glad they're here, make them feel real welcome. <clears throat> well, that week... <clears throat> the wife called me and started telling me how they came and, and everybody was mean to them. Well, you know what probably happened? Maybe one or two people were called to them. I don't know. I didn't see that. But that's probably what happened. One or two people were called to them and so everybody was called to them. You know what I mean? They, that's the way they perceived it. And so it's really, really sad that even those one or two people did not show the love of God like they should have. They, they knew that these people had seriously hurt the church. They seriously hurt the church. In fact, they even took some people with them when they left because they, they started flapping their mouth. <clears throat> um, and so that's what usually happens. Poison poisons other people. So, um, but they got a good reception, but a few people probably weren't, I guess. I still still can't tell you, tell you that at all for sure because I didn't see it. I saw nothing but good stuff. I watched it. But anyway, I'm just telling you that Everybody, everybody ought to look at it when somebody comes back to God. Yes, this is exciting. This is exciting. I'm glad they're here. Amen. That's the way you ought to look at it. And when they walk in for church, you know, and, uh, and just let, let God uh, continue to do the work that he's doing. I don't want to be a deterrent toward that. I want to be an encouragement toward them going in the right direction. And I'm going to do that by showing the love of Christ and covering the, the sins that they did. Okay, acting like they didn't do it. Act like they didn't do anything wrong. Treat them like that. All right? Now, I'm not saying compromise, because I don't believe in doing that. But again, you're not a newspaper reporter. You're not God's reporter. i got to make sure everybody knows about this. No, not at all. You're going to destroy somebody that way. You'll bury them. And we're not to bury. We're to try to help get them back up. All right? Now, let me give you some examples of loving Christians. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says, <clears throat> Paul's talking to Timothy. He says, let, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, 
in spirit, in faith, in purity. So in this long, this long list of things that he's supposed, he tells Timothy to be an example of, one of them is in love. We are to be an example to others in how we show love. You are to be an example of that. Are you being an example, Christian, of how you're supposed to show love to people? Are you doing that? All right, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10, talks about Paul. <clears throat> he, said, he said to Timothy, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, pure purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity. I have openly showed love to people. All right? <clears throat> Paul did that. And then 2 John chapter, uh, 2 John chapter 1, 2 John 1 through 6, uh, talks about Gaius. Uh, and the Bible says here, the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake, which dwelt in us and shall be with us forever, grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I have found thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment. <clears throat> From the Father, and I beseech you, thee, lady, as I thought, as I thought, I wrote unto, you, as I, as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we have from the beginning, that we love one another, and this, <clears throat> this is love that we walk after, after His commandments. This is the commandment that, as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. So Paul, John's talking about the, that to this lady, and is saying that we ought to love. People, right? And Third John talks about Gaius, and Gaius, it's not Second John, but Third John talks about Gaius, and again he talks about love. He talks about loving people in this chapter. So it's really important that we show the love. It's not just something we say, it's showed. And clearly in the Bible, it teaches what love is, but clearly in the Bible, love is shown. It's shown to others, right? It should be a huge part of the believer's life. And it will be if we are adding our faith like Second Peter to our faith like Second Peter instructs us to. So the question this morning is: uh, Is there obvious love in your life toward all those that God has allowed to be in your life? It should be that way. People should never get the impression that you hate them or you don't like them. All right, let's pray. Uh, thank you again for the Word of God. Help us to apply it to our life like we should. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for this passage, and we need your help to do this. We know we have these things in us. They need to show in our lives. And so, Holy Spirit, please make that happen in all of us. Thank you for loving us and caring for us like you do. And Lord, please give us a great service to follow. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.